and we're live. Hi everybody, it's Laura Hall and you're here with the Come Cook With Me show. So I am so thrilled to be here today live with you because we have such an amazing treat for all of you. Um, so um, if you caught the show last week, and many of you did, in fact, let me see, I wrote down, we had 69 shares of our video last week. We were live with a live audience actually last week on my birthday. So if you missed the show, I'm really, really sorry <laughs> because you missed an opportunity to win that bad boy that's right behind me, the Instapot. So um, I wanna just thank everyone again for all of the work that you did last week, making sure that the show went off really well. We had so much fun. I gotta tell you, doing a live audience was incredible. I, um, it just really was, it, the atmosphere was fun. Um, we had an amazing Q&A after the show, which unfortunately you all didn't get to see. And I guess what we should do next time we do it, and we'll learn each time we do a live show, um, like a live audience show, um, we'll just keep it rolling. We'll try to keep it rolling, I guess, because the Q&A, I mean, it was just an, an incredible, great, great questions being asked by people who are really curious about they had never, um, well, some people who were in the audience had an old school pressure cooker and that's what they grew up with, uh, you know, so I think a couple of those people were maybe um, 15 years, maybe 10 years older than me. Um, but you know, I grew up, as you know, how the show started is we, we started because, um, well, uh, long story, which we're not going to get into because that was covered last week. But you know, the show has kind of taken a, a, a turn where we started, you know, cooking my recipes in the uh, Instapot and we did it uh, versus traditional cooking in the slow cooker, which I have right here and you can't see it. It's too hot for me to pick up right now until I put my gloves on. Um, but there were so many people who were curious because they hadn't yet seen the Instapot. So it was just a really, really great Q&A. Bottom line is, is that it was a great show. Um, we had over, I said over 69 shares and if you shared the show, much like everything. So let's go ahead and set the tone right now. So one of the things that we do in our community is, and it's just to, to just and create just a, a great welcome environment is we say hello, who we are, where we're from. And when you do that on this tape right now on the video, on the feed, whether it's live or you hit it afterward, just say hello, who you are, where you're from. If you do that, you get a chance to win um, in a random generator spices. Um, and last week we actually had different um, gifts for the live audience as well as for anybody who was there and also shared the show um, and made a comment about the show. Uh, and normally when you share, like share this, like you just hit the button share right there at the bottom um, of your um, Facebook feed, all you have to do is hit the share button, share the video to your wall, and you get a chance to enter to win. And normally we do one of our seasonal shakes. So last week, because we had our first live audience, live on Facebook with a live audience, we did something really special and it was fun. So the winner for um, that, or what the prize was, was the Instapot that's behind us. So I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna, Hold off on any more because people are just dying to know who won. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just like, when I saw all those names and then I realized for the local prizes, I had to take out, I had to look for all the people who were local so that I could just put them in a grab bag. Um, I couldn't put them in the random generator. It just didn't work out. It was too time consuming. So let me share with you who won the two gifts. First, I'll start off with the two gifts. One was the um, gifts, gift tickets, gift Gift, certi gift certificates, two tickets to the magic show of Victor Zanko right downtown in Palencia on Market Street. So um, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, Maria and Tiverl, you won the two tickets, Maria. So I'm so excited. And I know that these tickets, these are, um, I'll get with Liz and uh, we'll make sure you get, I'll, I'll connect all of us via Messenger so that she knows that you won the two tickets. So congratulations, I'm so excited. So if you haven't been downtown Market Street, we have an amazing, I guess they, I think there's two shows. Victor, you can you can add to the, um, Victor or Liz, please add to the what's going on downtown and, and share, um, maybe I'll grab your link too, but he has an amazing 
amazing magic show and it's on they have a Saturday show and a Sunday show and it's just incredible our downtown is rocking on Market Street and if you haven't gone to it yet I recommend it highly so Victor um, uh, Vic, Victor Zinko is the magician and it, it, he's just um, well you just have to go all right so in addition to that gift um, the women at Palencia Beth find um, put together a nice little gift uh, at Palencia Business Center so if you aren't using Palencia Business Center I'm telling you what you're missing out because these ladies that they, they work their tails off at making sure you're so uber happy but she did it was a $50 gift certificate in printing from the print shop. Okay, and so the local person who won that is Jill Stonier. Jill, yay, <laughs> congratulations. So I'll send a message to all of you all so that you get that, let me put that down there for Jill. Okay, and the drum roll. The person who's winning this incredible Instapot. This is a nice one, it's a good one. And we're gonna do this again, so if you didn't win, just trust that we'll, we'll do it again and you'll you'll get a chance another time. But that went over so well. It was just so much fun talking to everybody who had shared, shared the uh, Facebook post on their wall. So I really appreciated that. Okay, so the winner is, and I did try to send a message out to everybody who shared, but I didn't get to everybody, so I apologize if I, I didn't get to you. Um, Megan Asor. Congratulations, Megan. You won the Instapot. I'm so excited for you. We'll get together and we'll chat about how I can get that off to you. Okay, so today's show, um, I have two treats for you. One is uh, we're going to do, we, well, we all have Super Bowl plans. So raise your hand, give me some love if you're doing something for the Super Bowl. I mean, who doesn't? Even if you don't like football, heck, just watching the commercials is, is, is really half the fun for me, anyway. So, um, I'm doing a healthy, yeah, thank you, thanks for the thumbs up. So I'm doing a healthy version of something that's a, I don't know, something about this dish that my husband is like, I gotta have, it. even if I can have it once a year, <laughs> this is his once a year treat um, that he has to have. But I decided, you know, I don't mind having this as a treat, but I certainly don't like it when I know what the ingredients are. So I've created a recipe that I think that you're gonna absolutely love. And so if you're asking me for the recipe right now, it's already up in the feed, all of the ingredients that we're gonna use. So uh, this one is a little time consuming because I have experimented with this one already. So I found that the best way is gonna be the way that I'm kind of showing you right now, but I, I'm gonna show you the slow cooker version as well. Um, I just found that, um, so I got a healthy version, which we're gonna make, I'm gonna show you how to do the healthy version, and then I'm gonna show you what the not so healthy version looks like in the uh, uh, slow cooker, because it's been, it's just been, oh, smelling the kitchen up so beautifully. Um, but let me start off with, e either way that you do it, if you have an Instapot, I strongly recommend that you do the chicken ahead of time. Um, and it's so easy because the Instant Pot just makes the, the chicken meat shred just so beautifully. So my recommendation is, and I have that part as part of the recipe up above. So you're gonna use the Instant Pot. I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the ingredients are for just getting the chickens ready. Oh, I forgot to pull the chickens out. I, I rinsed them and I put them in the refrigerator. Sorry about that. I got the chickens. <laughs> and it's gonna be spicy. <laughs> Um, you don't have to make it as spicy either, but what I love about how I'm preparing this is, um, well, it makes the flavor of the chicken just so incredible. And so when you do the chicken in the Instant Pot, you're going to just infuse these flavors that just are going to permeate into this chicken so that no matter what sauce you put it in, if you put it in the healthy sauce or you put it in the not so healthy sauce, you're just gonna absolutely love it. So, we're gonna start off with our chickens, and I make quite a bit because um, since I'm making it today, I thought we'll have some today. But what's really great about it is you can make this chicken ahead of time and then just get ready to use it whenever. Um, and you really can use this recipe for hot spicy chicken on anything. You're gonna do anything you're gonna do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the chickens in. I've gone ahead and rinsed them. 
I think I have a total of six chicken breasts in here. I do. <laughs> and I'm really sorry. I see that there's an afternoon glare. I shut all the blinds and, um, well, it's good. The spring is coming. And I know Punxsutawney Phil, he saw his shadow and said, you have six more weeks of winter. And I've talked to a couple of people who are up north today. Not happy campers, I know. Some of you are going through some really, really cold, cold area. Um, my friends in Illinois, super shout out to you all. Um, and then I get a, a few people who I talk to in Kentucky and you know, you get in the cold, you got the heat, and then it's like, oh. Well, I haven't checked, but we have a guy named Spike and he's at our Jacksonville Zoo. And if you haven't heard of Spike and you're local here in St. Augustine or Jacksonville, um, I haven't heard. So if you're from the local area and you heard of Spike, saw he's a porcupine. They say he's much ha more handsome than Punxsutawney Phil, um, but I haven't seen what he was going to do. He was coming out at about 11 o'clock to share uh, his his prediction for the rest of this this uh, uh, next couple weeks. So hopefully it felt like a little spring kind of happening for us today. Just a little, not so cold. So that was really good. Although I do have the fire on for real. Okay, so you're going to have the chicken in there. All right, and you're going to get two... Um, I got the bone broth. You know me. And if you're new to the show, again, don't forget to say hello, who you are, where you're from, uh, because next week we're going to have the spices, the Dano spices, and we'll have a seasonal shake. But I always get the bone broth with whatever I'm cooking with. Bone broth is so much better for you. This is an Imagine one. There's so many good ones out there in the marketplace. I like this one because it has a low sodium, low calories. There's no carbohydrates, no sugars added. I just, I love it. It's no GMO and the sodium is super low on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put two of them in, in my Instapot. I have a surprise for you. If you are local, you are going to absolutely love this. And um, I'll find out too. I'll have, um, when I show you the surprise, I'll have Cheryl kind of help you all out. If she's watching, I'll tag her um, to say, hey, Cheryl, we may have some orders on this. <laughs> But you're going to add just two. You want to make sure that the chicken is covered um, so that it really, there we go. I don't need the whole one. There we go. I'm making a shrimp pasta for dinner tonight, so I'll just save that for tonight. <laughs> What's left over. Perfect. Oh, yeah. And if you haven't seen my shrimp pasta, I actually, it's on one of the videos that I have on my YouTube channel. And my YouTube channel... A lot of people get confused, so, and I, it really should, I don't know. It's Lifestyle by Laura J. So when you go to YouTube, just do the search engine, Lifestyle by Laura J. You'll see all of the recipes that I've ever made. Shrimp pasta is out there, and it is one of my favorites. All right, so the spices that we're going to use, I'm going to use some onion and jalapeno. I've gone ahead and cut those up, so we're just going to add those to the pot. Easy breezy. And they don't have to be diced, you know, because they're really just adding flavor. They're, you know, infusing into the um, Instapot. Now, a lot of you don't have these peppers. They're daddle peppers. They're local here. They're a local uh, Florida pepper, but they're super uber spicy. They're much like a ghost pepper. Um, so you can get a Serrano because those are typically in the store. But I'm going to add two ghost peppers. One little teeny guy. They're really powerful. <laughs> And a medium-sized guy. Okay, that's all you're gonna need. <laughs> and the spices that I'm gonna use, I've gone ahead and listed them, and I'm just gonna go ahead. I only had, I guess I'll just finish that bottle of cumin. Okay, so we've got some cumin. We've got, remember, whenever we use spices, what we're doing is we want to keep as few toxins in our body as possible, right? So like chicken, I didn't have the chicken that I showed you, but it was a it was a free-range chicken. Um, it was a green wise, it, you know, so no antibiotics, no injection, no hormones. We don't need to have that in our body. As it is, we have too many toxins, so that we're, that's why we cleanse. We cleanse to get the toxins up. So we want to have no, no, no GMOs, no toxins, no hormones injected, uh, disrupting our, our endocrine system. We just don't need that. So I'm going to use the seven spices, the McCormick um, No GMO Certified Organic seven spice Japanese love it and yes it drives people crazy 
but I'm not the measuring kind of girl. I just don't measure. I gave you rough estimates up in the recipe page on, um, you know, if you did the spices the way I did, you probably wouldn't like all the heat that I put in. We like the heat in our house though. And then we have some hot Hungarian pep paprika. Yum, love this. And we have some cayenne pepper. So I'm gonna show you this really big surprise and I'm excited because this is the first time I'm actually cooking with it. Um, and I tasted it and let me tell you, it's phenomenal. It is phenomenal. So if you haven't seen this, this is all local. This is a local. Um, uh, it, 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 I love it because so many cooks are reaching out to me, some people who are creating, you know, obviously you all know about Dan O and his spices, Dan Oliver. He's on my, he's on my health and wellness team and he has created these incredible spices. They're going to be added here in just a smidgen. But then I was working with a decorator and her husband is creating these incredible, oh my God, these incredible spices with dano peppers. And we were talking because she was here measuring a window. So one of the things that he's created, he's created a salsa made with dano peppers and he's created a green um, pepper jelly. So it's called Menorcan Mike's. I'm going to show it to you. That's what the label looks like. And I think you can find it in a lot of local shops. I'm not positive. I will have to find out more about it. Um, but it, I know that it's a locally, um, it's local. And here is the daddle pepper salsa. Now I have tasted this bad boy and it is yummy. <laughs> Hi Micah. Yeah, them glasses. I know. <laughs> well, I can't see. <laughs> Leave it up to my girlfriend. <laughs> Okay. Oh my gosh. My mouth is just now watering because I put this daddle salsa in. So good. So good. So we're going to see what that does to it. And then the last thing we're going to add, I'm going to add a little bit of both savory and spicy of the Dano spices. Take a look at that guys. These are Kentucky proud. You can get these in most of the Kentucky stores and Dano, he always puts his, his, um, website. So if you want to get them, or just say hello who you are, where you're from, and you're going to get a chance to win them. Love them. And anybody who's won the Dano Spices, feel free to chime in and say how much you love them. It is outstanding. And we're going to actually use this a little bit in the um, healthy, healthy version. Okay, so I'm going to get my lid. We're going to easily make sure that the pin is down and the venting is off, lock it into place. And I'm gonna hit the manual for high pressure. And I just wanna add a little bit of extra time on, I think I put in the instructions 40 minutes because I just really want this, this chicken, as soon as I pull it out, it's just gonna shred. So you can do 40 minutes. And if you're cooking this the day of the Super Bowl, you can do 40 minutes, shred it, put it right back into the Instapot. Now just as saying that it's on, it's gonna start building up pressure. So you can put it right into the Instapot. Now I did this, and unless you have one of those Pyrex uh, uh, glass dishes that can fit inside, I, I recommend putting it in a Pyrex dish that you can put into the oven versus putting it in the Instapot. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that from this guy. Um, or you can use your slow cooker, either way. But again, I'm telling you the best way to get this chicken ready is here. Now some of you have asked, um, I know I had this conversation. I think it was last week we had this conversation. Some people said that they love to use the rotisserie chicken. I, I know, I think it was when we had comb chop with me. So you can absolutely use a rotisserie chicken. Um, my husband doesn't like having the dark meat. He just likes to have the white meat. So I've been very much a traditionalist. But if you are in a pinch and you don't have the ability to do this and you really want something quick and easy and you're running to, the, um, to, the, to a, a, a party, yeah, that rotisserie chicken, that comes in super uber handy because you can just shred it easily and make your sauce and boom, you're off you go. So that's really a great benefit of having the slow cooker. So let me show you what the slow cooker looks like. This is the not so healthy version. <laughs> let me take the top off. It's been, oh, mm, smells so darn good. Oh, you know what? Before I let anyone go, you know what I forgot to add? So look at how nice this is. Look, when you 
If it hasn't built up pressure, look what you can do. You can just take that off really quick before it builds up pressure. And I forgot to add the roasted garlic. I made roasted garlic to give it some more flavor. So I'm just gonna throw in some extra roasted garlic, guys. Yeah, some of these got a little crispy. I had them roasting too long. Perfect. I love that about the Instapot. If it hasn't built up pressure, you can still go ahead and do that. Now I did get a phone call, I should tell you. I got a phone call from my son. All right, so, all right, it's gonna keep going. Um, he says, Mom, it says burn. <laughs> he was making a pasta sauce, and I don't think he had enough tomato base in there. And so I said, well, turn it off and hit the release pressure right away and see if it hasn't burned. Usually that's a really good safety feature. Another reason why um, pressure cookers aren't as easy to work with as they are as an Instapot, because you don't have the, the pressure cooker telling you it's burning. <laughs> So, so that's one of the really great features of this. So let me show you the not so healthy version that's going on on this slow cooker. It is amazing. I should probably stir that real quick. Ooh, it's smelling pretty good. <laughs> All right, wait till you see what it looks like. It is, it is really yummy. So in here is a package of cream cheese, let me show you. Take a look. So all this is ready to go. All it's ready, needing is to have the, the um, shredded chicken. So this will be done in 40 minutes after it reaches the pressure. And I'm gonna shred the chicken, put it in, and I'll let it soak for about 20 minutes. It'll be perfect. Now, if you're using, you're making this recipe and you're going really quick to a party, like I said, get a rotisserie chicken, boom. You, it's not a problem whatsoever. Okay. So what's in that bad boy? This is the unhealthy version. Well, okay, for those of you who are really sensitive to not, these, these are not healthy ingredients. So you got a package of cream cheese, you've got some ranch dressing, they put the quantities. You can always double, triple, depending on how much chicken you have. I have four cups of shredded chicken, so you're gonna double that recipe. Um, so I actually have two packages of cream cheese, two cups of the ranch dressing, and I just use the Hidden Valley Ranch and uh, two cups of the red hot. Now what I love about this red hot is that they have a buffalo style and the original. So I like to actually mix it. So that's what's in there. And the only other thing that's in there is some crumbled blue cheese. And that is what is exactly in this guy. So now let's talk about what's gonna go into the um, healthy version. I love these ingredients and I think that you're going to absolutely love them too. So I'm going to show you by making it in this dish because I'm going to have this dish ready to go. It'll be, once the chicken is shredded, I'll be able to mix it all together. And then I'm just going to put this, this guy in the refrigerator so he's ready to go for Super Bowl because I'm going to have this on Super Bowl. <laughs> all right. So look at what I found. I love, love, love this. Um, cream cheese style spread. It's by Kite Hill and it's made from almond milk. So I'm just going to show that to you. Wonderful. Yeah. So, and it spreads. It's really, it's very similar spreading as the um, cream cheese. Okay. So I'm going to use two packages because I'm going to put the same amount of chicken in this one. And these are eight ounce packages, and I find these in the deli section, uh, or the, either you'll either find them in the deli section, or you're gonna find them in the vegetable section, in the fresh vegetables. You will not find them where the cream cheeses are, or at least that's how our grocery store is set up. These are good recycled. And then you're gonna use a kind of, I love Kite Hill. Kite Hill has an almond milk, yogurt I love it so we're going to use one of these just a 16 ounce and this i love there's no soy no it's all non-gmo it's just oh it smells so yummy too mm. And yes, you can use a, a Greek yogurt if you prefer instead. I just like the almond milk one because of the consistency for this recipe. 
because I tried it both ways, and both are great. Um, the uh, one in the, in the, if you use the one that's a milk base, uh, it it's, um, tends to be a little more tangy and tart. Since we're going for spice, I didn't think that was gonna be what we wanted. Okay, so then you're gonna to wanna to do a Greek yogurt. You can do a fresh Greek yogurt. I just found this um, Hidden Valley Greek yogurt. I liked it because I looked at the fat content and I looked at the sodium, which is so super low, and the carbs and the sugars were super low. So, but again, just pick one that you love. Um, I don't typically buy a yogurt dressing, so um, you're gonna use a cup of this. Yeah, so, oh, by the way, Braxton did not ruin his Instant Pot. He got it in time, and he says, Mom, it tasted okay. <laughs> All right, so the next thing you're going to add is your red hot sauce. And I'm going to actually put two cups of this red hot sauce because I'm using four cups of the, so I'm going to use one of the buffalo style. And I'm going to use one of the red just the original. Okay, now what you want to do with this is you also want to add in some Adano seasonings. I'm going to use the savory, not the spicy one, because it's going to give just, just that perfect balance of just everything you want. And then I'm going to mix that all together. And it's perfect. It's just absolutely perfect. Now, the last thing that I'm going to add is going to be some, um, your choice. I found two things that you could choose from. I'm going to pick one, not both of them. But I do have both to show you. So there is a go veggie. I don't know if you've seen this, it's in the vegetable area, but it's a go veggie cheddar style shreds. What I love about it, it's all vegan and um, it's, it's a cheese food alternative. So there's no cholesterol, no lactose, no gluten. There's six grams of protein and it's just, it's just incredible. So let me show you the packaging, go veggie. So you can add this one or you can add some more crumbly blue cheese. So I'm gonna add the crumbly blue cheese because I like a little bit of blue cheese in there. And I didn't see the go veggie in a, in a blue cheese format, but I'm just gonna use half of a package in this. Even though in the recipe I said you could use the whole package, I'm just gonna use a half. Because we just wanna add it just for taste. And that's it, that's how simple this is. It's really a simple, simple, easy go-to dish to take to any Super Bowl party. So speaking of Super Bowl, I'd love to hear what your plans are, what your favorite dishes are. I know that, um, I know on my healthy coaching page, there were a couple of recipes that were posted that I thought, oh my God, those, that's a great recipe. And maybe what I'll do is I'll grab them and post them below. Um, but there was a recipe I posted last week and it was the cucumber sandwiches. I'm thinking making a little bit of uh, a couple of those that that would be really just incredible okay and that's what it's gonna look like right there okay and that's it that's all there is to making this particular recipe if you want more information on Menorcan Menorcan Mike's battle pepper relish or his green green jellies just send me a quick note and I will send you uh, Cheryl Osteen's telephone number so you can order it directly or find out where, where what stores they have it in. It's a local um, local person, so it's gonna be in you know in this area, southern area. Um, with you know anticipation of growing in the north area, so <laughs> so we're gonna like just have great well wishes for 
for, for them on their endeavor. So I want to say thank you for coming to the show. It's a really quick, easy recipe. I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you. We should start thinking about maybe a Mardi Gras thing for next week. Um, so any thoughts and ideas would be fabulous. And um, any future recipes that you'd like to see, I know I have a couple of requests out there for uh, pasta rajol soup. Um, well, there's a whole bunch that people have sent. So any, any recipe in, that you'd like to see that uh, I haven't done yet, I'd be happy to do. So thanks again, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thanks for always making my week such a joy. Um, I love coming to you and I'm very humbled that so many of you stick around and, and hang out with us and hang out with me in the, in the kitchen. Um, it's just, it's such a blessing. I'm so, so very fortunate. Oh, what am I thinking? Next Thursday, um, I've been invited to be on a radio show. So I'll post a little bit more information on that. Uh, Chef Luca from Nor uh, New Hampshire has uh, invited me to be on his radio show next week. So that should be very fun. And uh, Chef, Luca, Chef Luca Paris, um, he is actually starting our healthy journey. So he's gonna be talking about how he's getting started um, on his uh, healthy journey into this new year. And it's just gonna be a ton of fun. I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. I've never done a radio show before, so this should be a lot of fun. And if you can tune in, I'll give you the, the radio station call and everything like that so that you can be you can listen to what goes on. <laughs> anyway, have a great weekend, everybody. Be safe. I don't know what team you're rooting for for the Super Bowl, but I hope your team wins. All right, have a great weekend. See you later, everybody.